Coins are exciting because they're a way into the past. They've got lots of symbolism in them. They can be very beautiful works of art. People have been able to buy things with coins for centuries. They represent free commerce that's uncomplicated, that doesn't need a pin number or the internet. The Trial of the Pigs is an incredible event. It's almost magical in a way. It's to do with testing metal, testing coinage. It's also about protecting the consumer. And you're going through this ancient ceremonies and it's just this fantastic insight into this tradition. One, two, eight, one, two, eight. The origins of the Trial of the Pigs go back as far as 1180. Now, for a bit of context, this is the same century as Genghis Khan, who found the Mongol Empire, is born. So around 1180, the king, Henry II, realises he needs to get control of the types of coin being produced by all the different mints spread around the country. There are lots of different mints, they're all run by different people, and it's really important that the coins they produce are standardised and trusted across the realm. And one of the ways you can do this is by testing the different coins produced by the mints and holding them to the same standards. So how do the Goldsmiths Company get involved in the trial of the picks? You need someone independent of the Royal Mint who's got special skills in testing precious metal, the materials that the coins are made out of. And in 1248, we can see 12 good and trusty goldsmiths of the City of London being part of the trial process. And in the time of Elizabeth I, there is actually a new rule passed, which means that all the jurors of the trial are made up of members of the goldsmiths company. And in fact, that's still the case today. So we have two books here from different ends of the 17th century, which tell us a little bit about the technical processes involved in the trial of the pigs. The first one is a manuscript book, and it's by the wonderfully named Hannibal Gammon Jr. And the page I've got it open at here shows a trial plate. So this is the control piece of precious metal against which the coins are tested. And you can see there is a slight zigzag pattern and this is so that different groups involved in the trial might all have a bit of the trial plate that they can keep and test the coins against. I confer that the United Kingdom coins I submit have been set aside in accordance with the Trial of Picks Order 1998 the trial has a very unusual name, the Trial of the Picks, and this comes from the small boxes that the coins are stored in. Box in Latin is picks, and so you're putting the contents of these storage boxes, these picks, on trial. During the trial, the coins are assessed against recognised standards known as the standard weights and the trial plates. And these are to check the weight of the coins and also their metal content. When the coins come in and are processed through the trial, they're counted to make sure that the right number of coins have been submitted for testing. They're inspected to make sure that their appearance conforms to the right standards as well. And they're also weighed. Later on, you can hear the coins being poured into the counting machine. The whole building comes alive with all of these voices and the sound of metal. During this process, a random selection of coins is made and those random coins are taken away to the assay office for testing over a period of months. We use different methods to test for the different metals used in the coins. Precious metal coins are drilled to ensure a homogeneous sample is used when we're weighing those samples to be tested. The drillings are all mixed together to ensure that the results represent the entire coin. Base metal coins are tested using X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy, which involves firing X-rays at the coin, which then are detected by the machine and translated into a result in percent, which is displayed on the computer screen. The trial culminates with the verdicts of the picks. At this event, the court is reconvened at Goldsmiths Hall 
and is presided over once again by the King's Remembrancer. The test results of the Assi Office analysis is read out and the King's Remembrancer announces whether the coins have passed the trial, whether they are within the permitted variation allowed or whether they have failed. I think it's easy to see the picks as a kind of ceremonial thing, but it's really, really important for consumers. It's really important that you know the money in your pocket is worth what it's meant to be worth. It combines ceremonial aspects, something that's really interesting and wonderful to watch, with a really, really important purpose. Thank you.